This is the multi-voice text-to-speech podfic reading of A Lesson in Fidelity by Quiet Lemon Hush, composed by Burning Aurora. Some things were not Sirius's fault. If Remus got up in arms every time someone did a double take, he would never know peace. Sirius turned heads no matter what he did, whether he dressed up or slummed around in ratty old joggers. Hell, once Sirius had crawled out of bed with a fever and smelling faintly of vomit, and Remus had still had to rescue him from an admirer. Actually, he was especially susceptible when he had a fever, partially because it made his cheeks pink and partially because he had less sense about him then and didn't notice that people were flirting. Which was the thing, Sirius didn't usually notice flirting, and very rarely engaged. If he did cotton on, it was much more likely that he'd drag the last vestiges of pure blood training out of his memory and curl his lips back in a truly unsettling sneer, one that could make even Remus feel ashamed of himself, and tell whoever it was to fuck right off. It was the singular reason Remus consented to go to muggle night clubs. Sirius was more than capable of frightening any admirers off before they got too many ideas. However, Sirius was also an asshole. Specifically, he was an asshole who liked to rile Remus up because he adored love bites and rough sex. And even though Remus had very patiently explained that Sirius could simply ask to be fucked, bloody annoying drama king that he was, Sirius preferred these things to be impulsive. Which was how Remus Lupin, a week from his rut and already on edge, ended up watching his boyfriend across the bar, laughing into Kingsley fucking Shacklebolt's jokes. They had come out to celebrate James's Quidditch win, which should have been fun. He should have been watching Regulus flounder in the face of middle-class etiquette, something he understood about as well as Welsh. Remus wouldn't have felt alone then. He would have been able to unleash Regulus on anyone that flirted too much. Regulus was wonderful at breaking up flirting. He had to be, after marrying James. But Regulus was at home with a headache and thus incapable of keeping his brother in line. So Remus was alone, surrounded by all of James's fucking athlete friends, including Kingsley fucking Shacklebolt, who was tall and rugged and utterly gorgeous. Worst of all, he had a crush on Sirius and flirted with him wantonly. Remus was not concerned with Sirius's fidelity. The flirting was toothless, the kind of thing done with a wink at Remus. He was still going to make Sirius regret it. The thing was, okay. That Sirius Black would only laugh at so many jokes in his life and Remus just wanted them. All of them. All of the instances of Sirius tipping his head back like that, his slender fingers wrapped around a sweating pint of beer, Remus wanted those. It was irrational. It was unhealthy. And it was true. People could have collections, couldn't they? And he collected Sirius, moments of him and wouldn't any collector feel inclined to jealousy to see someone else get a star piece. Remus didn't always feel like this, but again, his rut was a week out and he felt like he didn't fit inside his skin quite right and Sirius was flirting on purpose. Beside him, Marlene leaned back against the wall and whistled. You sure know how to pick em, Lupin. That's a mouthy little omega if I ever saw one. You're a mouthy little omega. Remus said, arching an eyebrow at Marlene, who grinned wolfishly back at him. Me? Nah. Pure alpha energy, Marlene said with a sniff. You have a bite mark on your neck, Remus said. Dorcas is a terribly needy bottom, Marlene sighed. I have personally witnessed Dorcas lift you over her shoulder. Strength has nothing to do with sexual inclination, Lupin. You were begging her to finger you at the time. Marlene blushed a little just a streak of red across her cheeks. Heat came early. And I offered you ten galleons not to mention that. No, Remus shook his head. You offered me ten galleons not to tell Lily because she'd make fun of you for uttering the phrase. Marlene's hand darted out and covered Remus's mouth. Shut it, she hissed. Lily has ears everywhere. Remus winked at her, and Marlene dropped her hand. Then he softened. I won't tell anyone. He promised. I wouldn't. Marlene rolled her eyes. You're too soft by half. She bumped her shoulder into Remus's, which was more or less Marlene's speak for friendship. And you should have taken the galleons. You could have bought a leash for Black. 
Remus looked over at Sirius again and set his teeth. It was worse than the Christmas party because this time Sirius was doing it on purpose, leaning into Kingsley, who had one arm looped around his waist. Kingsley was close enough to smell him, Remus was sure, the good citrus scent that lived at the base of his neck. He'd be close enough to see the pale violet lines that twined through the gray in Sirius's eyes. He'd be close enough to reach out and kiss him, if he wanted to. It looked like he absolutely wanted to. And from the way he was leaning in, his eyes fixed on Sirius's mouth, it looked like he might. Remus crossed the bar before he knew he was crossing the bar. He wrapped his fingers around Sirius's arm, flashed a frosty smile at Kingsley. Hello, Shacklebolt, he said. Stop touching my mega, won't you? The color rose instantly and viciously in Sirius's cheeks. Sirius didn't exactly hide his status. It had leaked from St. Mungo's after his first presentation, and even Regulus couldn't keep that news under wraps, not with all the money in the black vault. But Sirius was well feared and respected in his own right, and no one would ever think to call him that, to degrade him down to nothing more than a genetic marker. Remus especially never referred to him like that. He was serious before he was anything else. But if Sirius wanted to play an annoying little game of flirt, Remus could play an annoying little game of his own. In fact, Remus would play the game, win it, and put Sirius on his knees to thank him for the privilege of losing. Kingsley lifted his hand and held it palm up. No offense meant, he said with a smile. Oh, I understand. It's just, he gets ideas, you know. Remus slipped his own arm around Sirius's waist, tugging him into his hip. Sirius's mouth was working speechlessly, still in shock at what Remus had called him. Remus smiled. Odd things running around his pretty little head. I try to keep it simple for him. Mooney. Sirius finally managed. Love, did your heat already start? Is that why you're acting a bit slutty? Remus crooned. He palmed Sirius's arse proprietarily. No, no. Sirius stuttered. Remus would take this moment and put it in a pensive later so he could watch the humiliation and lust move across Sirius's face on repeat. No, we were just. Hush. Remus chastised. Don't fret about it, darling. I just needed to know if you needed something right now. But otherwise, you just keep looking beautiful for me, hem. Kingsley looked between the two of them, the corner of his mouth quirking up. That's very kind of you. It seems he needs some taking care of. Sirius's head jerked towards Kingsley, outrage on his features, and beneath it something else, something that Remus intended to ferret out and use to his advantage. You've no idea, Remus sighed. I mean, you've seen what I'm working with, yes. He gestured to Sirius, who followed his hand with his eyes, blushing so pink Remus thought he could tell him to strip and Sirius would obey him on the spot. And then he goes flirting with people. Honestly, sometimes I've half a mind to just pass him around and let people get it out of their system. Sirius made a noise that wasn't a moan but wasn't not a moan either. Mooney, he said again, a bit shakily. Mooney, I... I told you to hush, sweet thing, Remus said, squeezing Sirius's arse. Sirius made a squeaky, utterly aroused noise. Kingsley raked his eyes up and down Sirius's body. I'm sure people would appreciate the opportunity to share, he said in a softer, huskier voice. Remus slid his hand up Sirius's back like a man surveying his property, and settled his fingers over the nape of his neck, squeezing lightly. The pressure wasn't lost on Sirius. His mouth fell open and stayed that way, but no sound came out. Remus reached his free hand up to Sirius's lower lip, running the pad of his thumb back and forth over the pink plumpness of it. I'm sure they would, Remus said lowly. Pretty thing that he is, he's surprisingly obedient. Eager to please. Sirius whimpered in the back of his throat. Kingsley let out a bit of a ragged breath. If you ever did. Remus hummed in consideration. I could, you know. I could put him on his knees in front of this entire bar. Or, I could bend him over this. Remus nudged the table they were closest to with his shoe. And eat him open with my tongue. The noises he makes, believe me, Kingsley, they are delectable. Hell, you could fuck him, you and everyone else at this party. You're an alpha, aren't you? 
If I had a mind for it, I could even let you not him. He watched Sirius's eyes dart towards him, wide and hazy with lust, the smallest shake of his head. There was the line then. Remus noted it with a surge of pleasure and pride, stroked his thumb over Sirius's nape in recognition. Kingsley swallowed hard. You could, he said, aiming for even. Remus turned back towards Kingsley with a smile so sharp it could have cut him. But I'm not going to. Not ever. I'm going to keep all of that to myself. Thanks. Sirius let out a gust of air, teetering on his feet like he would fall over. Kingsley groaned, palmed himself through his robes. You're a tease, Lupin. Go find your own bitch, Shacklebolt, Remus said pleasantly. And don't touch mine again. He flipped Kingsley a two-fingered salute before leading Sirius away from the conversation by the back of his neck. Sirius stumbled a bit when he walked, falling into him, and Remus grabbed him by the elbow, squeezing hard enough to leave a bruise. Poor little Omega, he said in his ear, with just a bit of a sneer. So turned on you can't even walk right, can you? Oh God take me home, please take me home. Sirius begged, curling his fingers in Remus's shirt. Mooney, please, I... I thought you wanted to flirt, Remus asked with mock surprise. He looked around the room, packed with quite a few people they knew and even more that they didn't. There are plenty of alphas here you could fuck about with, Sirius. No, no, Remus, please, I want you, I want. Remus jerked Sirius out the back door of the bar and kicked the door closed behind them. He was about to do several things he did not want to do in front of all their friends. He slammed Sirius into the wall of the alley shoving him against the brickwork. Are you wet, love? He asked with a cruel smile. Are you dripping in your pants, all slicked up and desperate for a good, strong alpha to take care of you? Sirius shivered, but Remus could smell the desire and lust roiling off his skin. Rut too far away for your liking, Remus crooned. Needed to be put on your back and bred like the bitch you are just as fast as humanly possible. Godric, Sirius breathed. Remus tutted. If you say another man's name again tonight, you will not be able to sit down tomorrow, Sirius. Oh please. Sirius whimpered. Please, Mooney, please. Please what, Sirius? Remus murmured, grabbing Sirius's cheeks between his thumb and forefinger. Why don't you ask me nicely? You know I'll take care of you. Please take me home and fuck me. Sirius breathed. Please, please take me home and bend me over the couch. The couch? Anywhere you want. Anywhere. The bed or the couch or the table or in the shower. Sirius panted, shaking a little under Remus's hands. Anywhere you want, Remus, please just take me home and fuck me. Please. Please. Do you need it? Remus mused. Sirius surged forward to kiss him, and Remus shoved him back into the wall. Ah, say, answer my question. Please. Sirius whimpered. Merlin, Mooney, I'm so... He cut off with a yelp as Remus spun him around, shoved him face first against the wall. He plastered himself to Sirius's back, grinding the hard line of his cock against Sirius's arse. What did I tell you about other men's names? Remus asked in a soft, lethal voice. Sirius made an incoherent noise, scrabbling at the wall until Remus grabbed both his wrists and gathered them together. Enough of that. Stay still. Be a good Omega. Sirius shuddered a full-body thing. Yes, Remus. He whispered. Oh, that's very good. Remus praised, pressing a kiss to the back of his neck. He slipped one hand around Sirius's middle, felt his stomach clenching. Then he squeezed and disapparated them back to the middle of their flat. He gave himself just a moment to be proud of Sirius for not bitching about it before he grabbed a handful of his hair and bent him over the back of the couch. It was here you wanted, hum? Remus asked kicking Sirius's legs further apart. Sirius groaned, letting his head drop forward. Yes, please, he said faintly. Remus yanked his leather jacket off, and when Sirius moved to help him, he slapped his hand. Let me do it, he crooned, stripping the jacket from him and throwing it to the ground. I wouldn't want to confuse you. Not much space in that pretty little head, is there? Mooney, Sirius whined, fingers flexing on the fabric of the couch cushions. He was wearing a white t-shirt beneath the jacket, and Remus didn't bother to remove it. He ripped it in two and flung the shreds to the ground. He flicked open Sirius's jeans and dragged them down his legs, 
manhandling Sirius out of them and his boots in one messy movement. Remus stroked over the curve of Sirius's arse, kneading the pale flesh of one cheek under his fingers before abruptly slapping him hard enough to leave a bright pink handprint. Sirius jerked upright. Bend over the fucking couch, Remus growled. Sirius obeyed, a tremor going through his thighs, the backs of his legs. Remus spanked him again, right where his thigh met the curve of his arse, and Sirius yelped. Remus settled one big hand in the middle of Sirius's back, keeping him pinned to the couch, and spanked him until his hand went numb, stinging slaps that had Sirius squirming and whining, twisting away from him. Stay still, Remus ordered, bringing his hand down over the first hand print he had left, right where he knew it would sting. Sirius squealed, an undignified noise. Mooney, 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 he cried, both hands reaching back to block the blows. Please, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, I. Remus snarled, grabbed both his wrists, and ground them together against the small of his back, letting loose a rain of slaps until Sirius's arse was bright red and he was wailing into the couch. Remus ran his hand over the abused flesh, feeling Sirius shake. He pinched his inner thigh hard enough that Sirius jerked again, crying out, thrashing. Remus, Remus, I'm. Please. Sirius begged, voice quavering. Are you going to flirt with Kingsley Shacklebolt again? Remus asked roughly. Sirius shook his head frantically. Won't, won't, I swear, I. Are you going to be a good little Omega? Remus let it come out as sickly patronizing as it could, but Sirius just moaned into the couch nodded his head. Yes. Promise. Swear. Remus jerked him up and kissed him, one hand clenched in his hair, and Sirius swayed into his arms, boneless and shivery. Sirius was hard, as Remus knew he would be, glutton for punishment that he was. But he didn't grind into Remus's hip, didn't whine or demand, just took the kiss with such meek fucking obedience that Remus thought he should have spanked him ages ago. Remus bent him back over the couch without a word, loosening his belt and letting his jeans fall to the floor behind him. He had been hard since the bar, since he jerked Sirius against his side and insulted him. He gripped his cock by the base and ran the head of it through Sirius's cleft, smearing precum there. I'm going to fill you with my cum, Remus said conversationally, rocking his hips so that his cock slicked down Sirius's cleft, nudging his balls making Sirius shift restlessly. I'm going to make you scream, love. Sirius keened, pushing back against him. Remus murmured the lubrication charm and then he was pushing into Sirius relentlessly. Sirius gasped, arching up on the balls of his feet, but he was pinned between Remus's hips and the couch, and Remus split him open, hands bruising on his hips. Remus. Sirius groaned, clawing at the couch. That's it. Remus murmured, stilling giving him a moment to adjust. He stroked his thumbs over the dimples above Sirius's arse, then up his sides, soothing him. Let me take care of you. Gonna fill you up, so full it'll be spilling out of you, make a mess of you. You'll be able to taste me in your throat, Sirius. Fuck, fuck, yes, I want. Sirius hissed, rolling his hips back into Remus. Remus slapped his arse again, hard enough that his hand stung. No. You're just a pretty little Omega, Sirius. You lie here and take what I give you. Do you understand? Sirius clenched around him, fingers tightening on the sofa. Yes. Yeah, yes. Mooney, I understand. Say it. Sirius whimpered, shook his head, pressed his face into the cushions. Remus snarled, grabbed a handful of his hair and jerked him upright. Say it, Remus ordered. I'm just a, I can't. Remus pulled back and thrust in once, and Sirius groaned, arching back into him. Say it, Remus said again. Sirius's cheeks were so pink it must have hurt, shame and lust all tangled together on his features. I'm just a pretty, pretty little Omega, Remus supplied. And I take what you give me, Sirius said breathlessly. It was just a stupid game, but Remus's blood roared, and he fucked into Sirius in earnest now let the room fill with the wet smack of their bodies coming together. Sirius's hands flew to the couch, holding on desperately as Remus thrust into him. Remus pushed him over the edge of the couch, pressing him down until he was halfway bent, his arse up towards him. 
Then he thrust in again, angling at Sirius's prostate, working them both up into a lather until Sirius's voice cracked, and he pleaded for more in a ceaseless stream. Remus bent himself over Sirius's body and bit down hard on the nape of his neck as he came, his hips snapping irregularly. He only gave himself a moment to recover before he sank to his knees, pulling Sirius back from the couch and spinning him around so he could swallow his cock to the hilt. Sirius cried out, knees wobbling, his fingers clenched in Remus's hair. Remus bobbed his head fast, two fingers driving back inside of Sirius. Fucking his own come into his hole as Sirius gasped and shivered and came down his throat. Sirius sagged back against the couch as Remus swallowed around him, twitching and shivering, and then he sank down farther, sliding down to the floor beside Remus. Remus pulled him messily into his lap, kissing him again and again while Sirius twined his fingers into Remus's hair. It's fucking good, Sirius mumbled against his mouth. So good. Fuck. It's really good. Don't flirt with Shacklebolt anymore, Remus panted. Won't, won't, promise. Sirius agreed, nuzzling at Remus's jaw. Promise you'll call me a stupid little Omega again. Remus tightened his grip, pulling Sirius against his chest. Anytime you want, he murmured, biting Sirius's ear. Anytime you need. Sirius shuddered at his voice, arms tightening around Remus's neck. Bed. Bed. Remus agreed, standing and lifting Sirius in one smooth movement that would have his back hurting later. But he didn't care, not when Sirius gave a giddy little gasp. Don't think I can knot you on the couch. Ruts not for another week, Sirius said breathlessly. We'll find a way, Remus murmured, and moved towards the bedroom to do just that. Finite Thanks for listening to this text-to-speech podfic composed by Burning Aurora.